today we want to talk about how to identify counterfeit spiritual power. Uh, this will be a series, all right, uh, uh, until uh, the day that uh, we uh, uh, stop broadcasting or we stop having this uh, Zoom. But I think this, this will become a continued feature for a while because uh, this is very uh, interesting uh, way to communicate. I discovered that during this uh, MC overtime, uh, this is fantastic that we get to know many of you. Uh, some of you, we just say hi and bye when we were in uh, church on site, right? So online church is very exciting. Okay. So this series, we start off by, uh, let's look at 1 Timothy 4.1. The Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will be... Uh, Sorry, there is a, somebody is calling me. Oh, hold on. Uh, so the spirit clearly says that in later time, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. So here the, the prophecy already um, indicated by Paul the Apostle and he informed Timothy that uh, some of this thing will happen. Okay, so uh, we have to watch it. And there are a lot of uh, teaching out there right now Then, because of internet and because of social media, some of you are following all kinds of teaching. Like I said, the only way that you can safeguard yourself is to know the word of God. There are so, so many and so much deception and some of the big names out there, uh, you know, and they call themselves apostles, prophets, and so on. And you'll find that it is most dangerous if you do not know the word of God and that your understanding of the word of God is a secondary thing. It means that it's not the primary source. It's the secondary source. You always have to ask somebody, but get to the word of God. That's why in our church, we say you have to read the word of God yourself and be able to exegete, which means that I have to teach you how to fish. You depend on people to give you fish to eat, but you have to learn how to fish by yourself. And such teaching come through hypocritical uh, liars, all right, whose conscience have been sheared as with a hot iron, which means that they can look at you point blank and tell you lies, especially when you have preachers who preach very accurately, but they claim that they have this revelation directly from Jesus, you know, and let, let's say, for example, if I come to you and say, uh, you know, Jesus came to me last night and he, he sat down and he talked to me and he said, for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life, you know. But they added the, the first part, oh, Jesus give me this directly. But all these have been written in the word of God. But why do they do that? What is the ulterior motive? Always one thing, the ulterior motive is that I have one up against you. I am better than you. I have a special link with you. And in the 1980s, we have a lot of this in Singapore. And I'm putting this on YouTube. And I, 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 I'm looking at some, I hope that some of these who claim to be prophets and claim to be apostles during that time will hear this thing. Because many of their prophecies will fake. One of the prophecy was that Singapore would uh, be, you know, would sink into the sea. And that was in 1980s. And then within the 10 years period or whatever, you know, it's like some of the most ridiculous thing. And yet, because you know why we are superstitious and therefore we believe. And we, we are also idol worshiper. We do not worship the uh, kunyam and all that, but we worship pastors. We worship so-called prophets, apostles, you know, people call themselves apostles from Africa, from America, from Singapore, from all over. All these, right, their consciences have been shared as with hot iron because they really believe that they have that superpower. They have that special power. Nothing is, you know, is, 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 you, you have to come to a point in your life and say that, look, you know, I am only the, the servant of God and you humble yourself and that my source is always the Holy Spirit and the word of God. They go hand in hand. And there's no special source. Um, the special source will make you agnostic. You know, I have this 
uh, Sophia. Sophia means special wisdom that comes from God. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain food which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. So we have some people who came to our church and uh, speaking, you know, privately to individual, to our members and say that uh, God said you cannot eat pork, you know. So you can see that bowl of bakute there, all right? Or you cannot take that because uh, if you take that, uh, you will go to hell, you know, because you are you are against uh, the word of God. So all this, and the word of God, uh, this is not new. It happened in those days already, uh, you know. And so some some of the pastors are still going around to, to teach this. And for everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. Again, you can see here that Paul is very, very clear that we shouldn't be uh, so influenced by our the diet, you know, just because of certain diet, we are going to go to hell. And um, you remember, I, I, I taught you about the absolutes. Uh, the absolutes are the most important doctrine. For example, Jesus Christ is the son of God and Jesus Christ is God and he is our savior. So that's the absolute. But when you take something outside in the peripheral or take something that is uh, 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 frivolous and you put into the absolute, I say, this is also important. Like, for example, if I were to tell you that, oh, by your good work, you know, then you can gain heaven. Then I'm taking the peripheral, which means that when you got saved, the fruits of your salvation will be good work. But if I reverse it and say that, oh, your good work will give you the opportunity to, to gain heaven, then I deny the justification provided by the cross of Jesus Christ. All right? And so in those days, that's what happened. The people advocating good work, you know, not realizing that good work is the result of your salvation. That is the fruit, you see. But they will preach in such a way and then suddenly you feel guilt and then they take the good work and put into the absolute, which means that apart from Jesus Christ, you also need to have good work in order to be saved. Not re realizing realizing that is the fruit. Okay, so some of this thing, maybe one day we will be able to meet up just a few of us in a smaller group and we can discuss. And if you are really interested, we will get to the word of God and let the word of God speak, speak to us here. If you point this thing out to brothers and sisters, you'll be a good minister of Christ Jesus, nourished on the truth of the faith and of the good teaching that you have followed. So here, why are we pointing this thing out to you? It's because exactly this very verse admonishes us that we should be doing it. Because if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Remember, I told you the three things that you need to do. You need to repent, you need to renounce, and then you need to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. These are the three simple things. And then you don't need to go into all kinds of ritual, you know, that you need to uh, maybe maybe say heal Mary 2,000 times or you need to go to church midnight, you know, or, or go to the graveyard midnight. Uh, all those, or, or, or that when you pray, you must do a, a, a ritual, you know, then you must, you must kneel down one. If you don't kneel down, then your prayer is not counted. Or when you pray, you must do handstand, then if not, your prayer is not counted. All these, see, we are not practicing yoga. All these are suggested by uh, ministers and preachers who claim to know God. But, and they will tell you, oh, God told me, God told me. But you only have the word of God to guide you. Okay? You have the word of God. <coughs> have nothing to do with godless myth, means fairy tales, and old wives' tale. Rather, train yourself to be God. Because we hear too much. We got too much each year. We listen, 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 listen. And then when the pastors are teaching and get back to the word, get back to the word, we refuse. How many of you actually read the Bible every day? How many of you actually study the Bible every day? And being as pastors for so many years, we are still doing it. We are still getting into the word, getting into the word. Why? Because we know that the, in it is life. That is where you have power and authority. But you listen to all kinds of teaching. 
oh, this pastor said this, that pastor said this, and then you don't know. Get to the word. Get to the word. All right, let's look at uh, uh, Second Kings. I'd like to talk about Hezekiah. Too. You see, Hezekiah did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father David had done. All right? So Hezekiah was a very good king, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He followed, uh, David left a legacy of obedience. And so Hezekiah, you know, followed. Then what did he do? He removed the high places and smashed sacred stone and cut down Asherah poles. Now, you say, Pastor, I don't have this in my house. Oh, of course. You don't have it in your house in the physical sense, but do you have it in your heart? Do you still have idols? Do you still have the, the statue of lust that is controlling you? That you will do things that are not, you know, that bring favor, you know, bring, bring the approval of God. So what Hezekiah did was that he did for the nation, but you have to do it for your life because your life is given by God to you. You are responsible for your life. Nobody can succeed for you and nobody can fail for you. You know, you, you can come to us as pastors a thousand times and say, please pray for us uh, or please, please pray for me. Uh, you know, please lay hands on me. Please impart power and all that. It's not working because the first thing is that there need to be repentant. Repentant means that I destroy all these high places in my, in my life. I destroy all the sacred stone. Means that what are those establishments that is leading me towards a sinful life? All right. And then I have to take, get rid of this. So this one you have to get rid you cannot pray and say, God, help, uh, no, God, get rid of it for me. First and foremost is that this is in the area of your will. And because it's in the area of your will, therefore God has to depend on you to say, I want to get rid of it. And then he broke into pieces the bronze snake Moses had made. For up to that time, Israelite had been burning incense to it. It was called Nahushtan. Nahushtan. All right, now Nahushtan means the bronze thing or the worthless thing. All right, now <clears throat> many of you will be thinking, you know, wow, this is actually the bronze serpent that Moses had erected. And you find that the, the Lord said to Moses, make a snake, okay, and put it up on the pole because during that time of disobedience, uh, the Lord allowed snakes to come into the camp. And poisonous snake began to kill people. And so the Lord told Moses, you want a cure? All right. Make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. When anyone was bitten by a snake, look at the bronze snake. They live. And this was a symbol of Christ on the cross. When Christ was on the cross, he took our sin. All right. All our, all our dirty things and all our lustful things and all our uh, evil things, Jesus was on the cross. So he was like a snake on the cross. <laughs> okay? But later on, you, you find what happened here is that uh, people began to worship this uh, uh, snake. And they give power, they attribute power to this object. And Hezekiah had the wisdom to break this. And today I'm, I'm saying to some of you here is that you, you can be a Christian, but you still have a superstition. Like some of the Christian, right? They believe that they take communion <coughs> every day. Now, it's good to take communion. What is the purpose? Is in remembrance of Christ and in and, and that to know that Christ has the power to heal us and Christ has the power to bless us, all right? Well, he died on the cross for us and then his broken body that our body might be made whole. So we believe in all that. But the worst thing is that some of us become superstitious. We begin to attribute power to the cup and the bread. That this object has super power. This object has spiritual power. So it becomes a, 
like a talisman, right? It becomes like a charm. So believers are tempted to use the good things of the Lord to control their faith. And so they began to, to, to preach about this and say, oh, you know, you must always take Holy, Holy Communion because they're power. But they forgot about trusting in God alone. I do not take Holy Communion every day. Some of my pastors, they do. Some of the uh, church members, they do. But if you are doing it out of superstition, I, may I ask you to stop? Because you have, you have degraded the purpose of communion. So be very careful what you are doing. And then some Christians still believe that Friday the 13th is a very bad luck day. And they won't go. And then some Christians still talk about touch wood. You know, every time uh, in conversation and then they say something and then they say touch wood, touch wood, touch wood. Why? Because of the, the residue of their belief from the world. And now they carry it into the church. And not realizing that that is the that is the superstitions of the world, and we Christian has nothing to do with that. And then they really feel like, oh, you know, Pastor, no, you you know why I become sick or not? Because that day a black cat crossed my path. Let me put it this way: you don't like black cat, you can pass to me. I love cats. I love dogs, any color. All right, but you see, because of your superstitions. And then uh, they have this rosary or cross hanging in the car that has uh, spiritual power. For example, one man, you know, he, he said that he put this rosary and with, with a cross in his car. And for the last 10 years, no accident, no, no accident. All right. Then one day he, he, he loaned the car to his cousin. And his cousin took out the rosary. And pass the car back to him, and he, he, he couldn't find the rosary to hang there. And so he, he immediately he got into an accident. All right. Then he said, How do you explain that? I say, You have attributed power to the rosary. Where is your God? Is your God not everywhere? Oh, you know, I have to have this. This is the, the magic cross, and this is the, you know, uh, this is the charm that God gave me. So I'm going to put this in my wallet. Every time I put it in my wallet, uh, when I go and do sales, uh, I surely uh, succeed, you know. Then what are you? You are like, like what I came from, right? In, when I was uh, a Taoist, you know, we, my mom always gave me that triangle, ye yellow paper put in my wallet so that when I was in the army, I, I would be safe and all, all that. So these are some of the, the things that we, we believe. And then some of you here in your shop, you have this Japanese waving cat, Manake Neko, right? Wave and bring you good luck, bring you good luck, right? Bring you business, right? Okay. Uh, the, the, the sign on the, this cat is called Chen Wan Liang, uh, so that you earn a lot of money. And then some of us here still can believe that first day of Chinese New Year, you cannot sweep floor. And so you hide away all the brooms, but that came from your parents. Okay. Remember? Cross finger. Every time you want to say a lie, you say cross your finger. Or you believe in breaking a mirror. Seven years of bad luck. Or don't walk under the ladder. But of course, now when the ladder, when somebody is doing painting there, you don't walk under the ladder. Like that is called wisdom. Because the pain will drop on you or the, 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 the person will drop a pot of pain on you, right? So uh, in this series, we are going to talk about things like holy laughter, sounds like animals, drunkenness, gold dust, angel feathers, gold feelings, diamonds, and precious stone. And all of these have been in the last 20, 30 years have been coming forth, you know. Um, but let me tell you my qualification. I've been a Pentecostal all my life. All right. I got saved as a, and uh, immediately filled with the Holy Spirit, spoke in tongues, you know, you know and uh, seen miracles. And now my ministry is in uh, healing. And we have seen, like, uh, last 15 years, we got more than 10,000 people healed. And so I'm not against the charismatic or the Pentecostal, but Anything that is not in the, 
in the Bible, I want you all to be careful. That's all. So you want to know, if you want the real thing, then let's have the real thing. But if it's counterfeit, then let's expose it. And with no fear. You say, oh, pastor, you are not as famous as some pastor. Of course. There are many, many other people who are very, very famous. But can you be as famous as the word of God? Can you be as grounded as the word of God? Can you create, can these people create the foundation that's called the word of God? They can't. So no matter how big a name you are, how small a name I am, we are still being tested and still being evaluated by the word of God. Okay? And, and so how do you actually interpret the word of God? And we will be spending time, uh, you know, in some other uh, the session to talk about it. Now, we have this, this verse that is very important. They say, whatever the Lord pleases, he does in heavens and in earth, in the seas and in all deeps. So can, can God make a donkey talk? Of course, he has the power to. Can God, uh, you know, stop the sun? Yes, he can. So our God is in heaven. In Psalm 115, say, he does whatever he pleases. That is a sovereignty of God. Means that God, right, he would do uh, whatever he likes, but he always have us in his mind. He wouldn't do something that will hurt us, right? So you'll find that some of the strange things that God did, right? He spoke to a bush that did not burn up. Then uh, in order to guide the children of Israel, there, were, there was this pillar of fire in the wilderness at night to keep the people warm too. And then a cloud that covered a mountain, but the people were also led by a pillar of cloud. And you find that the Lord actually stopped the Pharaoh uh, from reaching the children of Israel until they crossed over the, the Red Sea by using this pillar of fire and clouds and so on. So God, he can do anything that he wants. So I say to you, God spoken through a donkey, Numbers 22, 30, uh, the physical presence of angels. Means angels can come dressed like human being and talking to you and me. And God spoke to some unusual object lessons in the life of the prophets. So, so if you are looking at this video, you can go back and check all the verses that I quote here. Hosea 1, 2, Ezekiel 4, Jeremiah 13, and so on. Okay? And then you find that uh, the early Christians, uh, people like Peter and John and the uh, disciples, and uh, uh, 120 actually in the upper room, they were speaking foreign languages that they had not studied. And then you find that they healed the blind, they healed the lame, Acts 3, Acts 9, and all that, and they raised the dead. All this can happen. And we are seeing things happening right now in our ministry, in, in, in faith line, people get healed. Uh, two brothers with uh, nose cancer got healed. But because we live in an imperfect world, and therefore you, you find that we are still succumb to death. Recently, Pastor Ashok uh, uh, taught on death. Uh, the biblical understanding of death, and I have posted this and, and, and sent to all of you. It would be good for you to go and, and, and uh, listen to what he talked about death. I think I posted it last night. Yeah, so, so go and, go and uh, listen to it. Yeah, so that you understand, you understand what is the imperfect world. That though salvation has come, but then one day death shall be no more. So we can talk more about, about that. Now, the people of Berea were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica, and they listened eagerly to Paul's message. And the second part of this verse say, they searched the scripture day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. They searched the scripture. And that's what I want you to do, search the scripture. In fact, I'm going to have extra zooming session if you care to come in uh, it will be in the night time and then uh, i'll be helping you to search the scripture it means that you learn the principle of exegesis and also the principle of hermeneutics exegesis is to to, to exegete from the bible it means that the bible cannot speak what it 
it does not speak, right? Like that day, uh, we spent time to exegete uh, Matthew 3 about the baptism of uh, the Holy Spirit and fire. And then what it meant by eternal fire. And why did uh, in, in four, four areas in the very same chapter that uh, John the Baptist talked about fire. Okay? And then we went through verse by verse. Okay? So it is very important for us to know the to know the truth and so that the truth can set us free. Okay. So it says here that the Berians, they were more open-minded. They listened eagerly to Paul's message. They searched the scripture day after day. And why? Is to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. So what I'm teaching you or whomever who will teach you, you have to search the Bible and see whether I'm speaking the truth. And so 1 John 4, 1 says, Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claim to speak by the Spirit. Now, there are some uh, strange preachers, you know, dressed strange in strange clothes, and then keep telling you that, oh, you know, the Holy Spirit told me this, and Jesus appeared to me, and Moses talked to me, and Jeremiah talked to me, you know, and, and we are like such good friends, you know, and then, I go to heaven and come back uh, at will. And yet they preach very accurately. They, 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 they preach. And, and I don't see any deviation from the truth. But the additional part, you know, the claim that they have this direct word from Moses and all that, uh, which you can find it from the Bible. And why would God want to do that when he gives you the Bible? But the, again, you see, I begin to, 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 to suspect what is the purpose of putting the mystical element. Uh, that is, an, number one, is, of course, the pride of life. And number two, that is lies. Because if Moses never really appeared to you or Jesus never really appeared to you, no point saying that. Maybe you imagine it, but don't say that you have been caught up to heaven and then every time, you know, every day I'm caught up to heaven. You know, and every day Jesus comes into my bedroom like that. Uh, I can say I talk to uh, Christ and, and, and I know that he is there. But don't, don't say, you know, you talk to him eyeball to eyeball and then he got blue eye or brown eye or whatever. Um, if it's not true, don't say it. It can happen, yes. Angel can appear. But to claim that daily you are, you are doing this, then, then uh, you have to become, uh, you have to question. How come this pastor or this prophet or this apostle is saying that? So do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if, there's, if the Spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. And now we have a means to test and of course we have the Word of God to, to test. And so there is a big cross over here. Because of the great interest in, super, in the supernatural and miracles, many believers have crossed over to the second heaven <coughs> and requested help from supernatural being. I want you to know there are three heavens, right? You have the third heaven where God is and uh, the angels that serve him. And then you have the second heaven where angels and demons <coughs> and fallen angels conflict. The second heaven is where where supernatural power they encounter. And that's not our area. That's why we never rebuke the, this, this part of heaven. Uh, the first heaven is us. Our earth is the first heaven. Okay, this is called, and this is the place that God has given us dominion. And when Jesus died on the cross for us, the covenant that he has with us, give us the power to take back what Satan had stolen. So our job here, is that if any demon come here and they possess our people, we can cast it out. Why? Because we have legal rights. Now, demons are not just going to come out because you scream so loud and then you got big eyeballs and you can scare them. You know? They are not afraid of you. But they are afraid of the covenant. They are afraid of the name of Jesus and they are afraid of Jesus himself. So it's like this young, young boy, you know, when he stood there and he shouted at the bullies. <coughs> at first, the bullies were beating him up. But suddenly one day when he shouted at the bullies, the bully ran. 
And so he was so excited. Wow, I'm so powerful. But what he didn't look behind was that his father was standing there. His father was standing there looking at the bullies. And the bully wasn't looking at the boy. The bullies were looking at the father and say, oh, we better go because this man is going to beat us up. And same thing, behind you, behind me, there's the presence of Christ towering over us. All right. And then why are we behaving with such fear? You know, oh, I'm so, you know, I have so much darkness in my life. You have darkness because the light is not there. Jesus is so good that he said that not only that he is the light of the world, but you are the light of the world. You are the light too. And he is not talking about a reflection. It's not a reflection. You are the light because you are, he comes inside you and the light shines. And therefore you are also the light. But because some of us here, we want so desperately to have superpower, miracles, signs and wonders. We cross over to the second heaven and we depend upon angels. All right, We call angels to come in and, and do work. And worst thing, fallen angels. <clears throat> Let me share with you. I, I, I live in Cambodia for seven years. Now, before the fall of Cambodia to Pol Pot, to the, to the communists. There was a young evangelist from America and he was sent by God over there to prepare the people. And great miracles happened. And he even wrote a book. And one Cambodian pastor showed me that book when I was there. And so I said, what happened to this young man? Uh, then the Cambodian pastor shook his head and said that, that he learned about what happened to this young evangelist. Uh, when, when the communists came, of course, this young evangelist was asked by his embassy to leave, uh, to leave the country. And so he left. He went back to America. And then suddenly he realized that he has no more power. That when he tried to heal people, nothing happened. And maybe because of the unbelief of the people or maybe because he himself had no more faith. And subsequently, he left the ministry. He left Christianity and he went into New Age. And that was his, uh, the, you know, that's the end of him. We no longer hear about him. He went into become a New Age uh, practitioner because he wanted to cross over. And today, many churches are crossing over into this new age thing, right? And we go into the, the second heaven. Like, for example, on YouTube, you will find that there's a guy called Todd Bentley. And he, he heals not by the power of the Holy Spirit. He heals by the power of an angel called Emma. Yeah, he talked to Emma. And then he said, this Emma bring healing. Now, you can go to the YouTube and, and, and start to see all this. And so uh, maybe some of you might just go and do healing by the name of Emma, you see? Now, I'm asking a question here. Kundalini spirit. Has a Kundalini spirit infiltrated Christianity? You find that a Kundalini spirit is a Hinduistic uh, uh, spirit. It's from a yoga called Raja Yoga. Okay. And Kundalini spirit is an imitation Holy Spirit. And so you find that most probably the main or the head spirit has masked itself as the Holy Spirit and infiltrated into many charismatic circles. And it's now in full operation. And so when you see people go into this jerk like that, right, then you, uh, this is uncontrollable. When I was in America, I attended a meeting because I, they, they said that this uh, prophet is so powerful and all that. And so I went with this friend. And suddenly it was, uh, it was a very scary experience because uh, of course, we are not afraid of speaking in tongues, but then you find that people began to roar like lion and began to bark like dogs and then like a rooster and all that. So when the preacher began to preach, his wife <coughs> came.
kept interrupting the service with this uncontrollable shout. So the evangelist or the prophet was preaching and then she'll go, ha! and two minutes, ha! and ha! I keep doing it. And not that she was having hiccup. And so until such time, people kept looking and say where the sound came from. It came from the front. So I was looking too. And then the uh, evangelist explained, oh, you know, ever since my wife and I, we landed, uh, you know, they, they took a plane to that place. And then, you know, the Holy Spirit was upon her. And therefore, she just cannot uh, control, you know, and she, she kept doing this thing. And I was saying, hmm. Uh, that's not, not the Holy Spirit that I know and not the Holy Spirit that we have learned from the Bible. Okay? Where the, when, when a person is filled with spirit, he has a sound mind. He doesn't need to be to a point whereby he cannot uh, control him, himself like he is being possessed by uh, the demon. And even, you know, the, the Holy Spirit respect you. Uh, he wouldn't take possession of you to, to that point where, you know, you lose control of your will. Okay. So this is uh, this Kundalini spirit came from Hinduism, and Hindu Hinduism had many uh, yoga, and so this is from the Ra uh, Raja Yoga or from Royal Yoga in Kashmir, in the north. All right, it's a sect of Hinduism. Now I. I can't show you the video here because I don't think I have the rights to, to, to show. But privately, I can show you uh, uh, the reaction of the uh, devotees of this yoga, the, Kund the, the Kundalini yoga, and also the people in the charismatic circle that have been affected by this Kundalini spirit. And of course, uh, uh, if I were to tell these people, they would say, no, 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 this is the Holy Spirit. But in all my years as a Pentecostal, uh, in the past, yes, we had this kind of excesses, but we have like a pendulum. You know, we, we swung to one side extreme and then now we are swinging back. And, and, and so you find that uh, for the Pentecostal, there's a much older uh, Holy Spirit movement. We have gone back to the word, gone back to the word. And then we do real thing, which means that it's not just all the hypes, but when there's healing, uh, you can prove that there's real uh, healing, which means that there can be medical search and, and so on and so forth. All right. And like, uh, like, I, like I said, that when we went on mission trip, the milk, if they, are, they were born deaf and dumb, and then when, we, when, when they got healed, we don't just say they got healed, we test them. We test them and they could hear, and then we ask them to repeat after us, and they could. Previously, they couldn't, but they could. So all these are real things that happen. So my question here is that what do you want? You want counterfeit? You want real? Get to the word. Get to the word. Okay. And so this is a kind of a serpent spirit that is in Hinduism. It's awakening Kundalini. And Kundalini in the English means the serpent power. Okay. It is the common Hindu belief that within each person, there is a, a serpent that coiled tightly up at the base of your spine. Okay, so so is 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 at the base of your spine. This is your this is your spine. This is at the base here, at the base here. So the very moment when the Kundalini serpent becomes alive, you will go into this kind of a action, the re reflect action. You know, you will go, <laughs> yeah. So. And this is now happening in churches, uh, you know, in all our Pentecostal uh, uh, churches now, now being affected, being influenced by this kind of a, uh, a Kundalini spirit. And then it's also happening in the Pentecostal churches, not just the charismatic. Okay. And so uh, they say, you know, wheel of spinning energy, and you can go to the internet and you find all these the body has seven major energy center located within the body in front of the spinal column, aligned vertically up and down the spine. Each wheel has a color of rainbow and vibrate to a musical note. Now, all of these here, uh, you will find that some pastors would actually use some of this 
and then put into their sermon and trying to, to tell you that uh, this is of God. And therefore, you have to find out. You have to find out. And uh, then you have, the, there is a manifestation of the three Brahma, Krishna, Kundalini versus the manifestation of certain charismatic meetings. <coughs> the involuntary fall down unconscious and enter a rapturous state of super conscious bliss. All right. Now, I'm not against, you know, being knocked down by the Holy Spirit. I have been knocked down by the Holy Spirit. But what I'm against are fake, which means that the Holy Spirit never knocked you down and you go down by yourself. All right. And because it is a cultural thing. Uh, and in, in our Malaysian churches and Singapore churches, we have that. And some of our pastors who are so immature, we look for that. We, we actually want, want to show our power. Oh, look, there's power in my hand. Ooh. And then when we go to you, we lay hands on you, right? We lay hands on you. And then you, if you don't fall down, we will push you down. We'll push you down. Why? Because I'm going to show you how powerful I am. I am the anointed uh, prophet, you know. I am so full of the Holy Spirit. I must knock you down. And then some of you, when you resist, you don't want to go down. Then I kick your leg, la, then you, you go down. You know? I give it to you. And what is that? Just show that the person is immature. That's all. The pastor is immature. But did anybody have gone down by the Holy Spirit when I lay hands? Yes. So I'm not against it. But what I'm against is counterfeit. You know, it's like the real Rolex watch and the fake one. I'm not against wearing real Rolex watch. You want to give me a real one? I'll take it. But don't give me a fake one from Thailand or from Taiwan or from where. <laughs> All right. So what I'm saying here is that I'm not against being knocked down by the Holy Spirit. You, you use the term slain by the, by the Spirit, which, which is fine. But don't make it into a culture. Let me share you this, this uh, real, real life experience. I was asked to pastor a church in the Philippines. At that time, I was still a student uh, studying for my master's. And during weekend, we were asked to go and uh, minister. And so this church in the barrio asked me to uh, help them to pastor. So I became one of the uh, pastors. And of course, the pastor was very kind. He said that, uh, tell us what to do and, and, and we will do. And so when I went there, the first service, when I preached, after I preached, I give altar call. And when I give altar call, the altar was packed with people. It was a small church, about 50, 60 people. But almost everybody came out to be prayed for. You imagine 50, 60 uh, people in a very small altar area. And then as I walked down and lay hands on the people, they began to fall like flies. You know, at that time, I was still very young, <laughs> a very young pastor. And I said, wow, I'm so powerful, you know. But I noticed something. I, I, I noticed that uh, number one thing is that they would fall when they look back. They, some of them will look back and see if somebody is catching them. Then they will fall. All right? Then I have this gift, you know, of suspicion. You know? So I was like, maybe fake ones. You know? Maybe fake ones. And so I had never liked this fake stuff. So I went back to the pulpit and I said to them, I said that, I thank God that, you know, the Holy Spirit is here and you're all uh, being slain by the Holy Spirit. I want you to get up and I want to tell you something. I say that if the Holy Spirit knocked you down, you can't stop it, right? Because he knocked you down. Because I was knocked down by the Holy Spirit too. The only thing I realized I was on the way down was that halfway I became conscious. Then I hit the floor and nobody caught me and I was not hurt. But that means that's the real one. But if you fall down by yourself and you fake it, then you're actually lying. And I, that time I was a young uh, pastor, so I, I said, if you lie, you fry. Means that you go to hell. <laughs> of course not lie, you know. You can confess your sin. But what happened was, the next service, when I preach, nobody fell. Nobody, everybody stood very stiff, you know, because I give auto call and everybody stood. So again, you see, you ask yourself, have you been so influenced by the culture? Uh, some of you 
might be influenced by the culture. Some of you are really knocked down by the Holy Spirit. Well, the third one is that you are feeling sleepy, so you want to take a nap. So you fall down and you want to take a nap. Okay? All right. Then uh, there are those who always advocate vision and then out of the body experience and all that. Now, if the Lord wants you to have it, the Lord will give it to you. But if you are perpetually seeking for this kind of thing, be very careful because demonic power from the second heaven or the angelic power, they can help you to do this. All right. And so that becomes, uh, we are more desire, I mean, we desire more of the spiritual experience than God himself. And then we boast about it. You know, God give me this vision and that. But like I, I, I shared with some of you here, every night actually, when I'm about to sleep, I will see beautiful, you know, landscape, sceneries. You know? And I could see every grass, every flower. And, all that. and because I am, God gave me the gift of being an artist. And so I, I believe that my imagination and my imaging power much stronger than most uh, people. But I shouldn't make that into, I shouldn't leverage that and say that, you know, I have this special power. And all that. Okay, so be very careful if you are seeking for it and then ultimately glorifying it. So be very careful. You might not be affected by lust of the eye or the lust of the flesh, but the pride of life affects us a lot. Okay? Some of us is that we want to have a very big church so that we can show off. Others is that we want to have, show that we have supernatural power more than all of you so that we can show off. So be very careful. God, read the intent of your heart you know, deep down inside. Okay, And then you have this, uh, oftentimes is accompanied by uncontrollable laughter or weeping. All right. And then uh, in the next uh, session, we will be talking more about that. Okay. And then the, practic the practitioner would send others into this state with a single touch to the head or chest, which means that when they lay hands on you, you can go into this uncontrollable laughter or they can push you down. They can do uh, all kinds of... Uh, uh, supernatural uh, impartation to you. But when you look at their life, they have a problem with their walk with the Lord, with their morals and so on. So you have to check again, check again, check again. What kind of spirit? Is it the spirit of God or is it not? Okay. And so you find that uh, various physical and emotional manifestation, manifestation included uncontrollable laughing, roaring, barking, hissing, crying, shaking, and some devotees became mute or unconscious. Now, let me uh, qualify this thing. I was uh, involved in a ministry whereby we were in Pennsylvania uh, in one of the churches. And then after my friend preached, I ministered, uh, you know, and one sister began to laugh, just one, not the whole church, one. And she laughed and she laughed and she and then she cried and she laughed. And then she was like, you no, know, she was, she finally found a chair and she sat down and she kept laughing and crying. And so after the whole thing, I went to her and asked her, I said that, uh, sister, uh, can you tell me what happened? And then it turned out that she was actually the pastor's wife. <laughs> All right. And at that time, she was already in her 50s. And uh, so she said, Pastor, you do not know me. I am a very uptight person. And ever since my, past, my, my husband became a pastor, I became worse, uh, very tense and uh, very stressed. And they say that uh, this morning, you know, when she heard the sermon, the Holy Spirit just released something in her and she began to laugh. And I, and I understand that. I said, oh, okay. So, so, so the... Holy Spirit will allow you to release all the tension through laughing. But to go around, you know, and to go around and to, uh, to make this into a regular ritual. And 
I can only say is questionable. Have I been to such meeting? Yes. But was I influenced by it? No. Uh, one of my friends got caught and he was laughing on the floor. But I was just looking around and saying, where do I find this in the Word of God? Okay. So maybe some of you might have experienced this before and you might want to share uh, later. Okay. And many felt themselves infused with a feeling of great joy and peace and love. And at other times, the fire was so overwhelming, they would find themselves in voluntarily hyperventilating to cool themselves, like panting. <sighs> okay. So can Kundalini spirit give you that sense of joy, peace, and love? Apparently, it can. And for Hindu practitioners, they will tell you they also enjoy that. Okay. So uh, I will stop here. Uh, we will talk about gold dust uh, in the, uh, on, on Thursday, all right? We will talk more about that. Uh, I have seen real gold dust, but uh, what I, I, I want to share is, of course, uh, that be very careful with the, the fake one. 